Hey, my friends. Nice to see you here again this Sunday. I hope you're fine. I hope you've been keeping well. I hope you've been taking care of yourself. And like we learned last Sunday, I hope you've been telling anyone that you can about the love of Christ, about the kingdom of God, about having a relationship with Jesus Christ. All right. It's good to be back here again. It's another Sunday. It's something I look forward to. And I want to believe that you look forward to it as well. So welcome to church. If you have your brother or your sister or your friend there with you, you can turn around and tell them with a smile, welcome to church. All right, nice to have you here. So today we're going to take another topic entirely. Okay, different from what we studied last Sunday. However, before we go into the lesson, let's pray. Remember, we cannot do anything by ourselves. Okay, so we'll always have to pray to invite God to be with us and to ask him for his help. So let's close our eyes and take this short prayer. In Jesus name, our precious heavenly father, we are here again, all by your grace, all by your mercy, all by your power. We do not take your grace for granted. We thank you for the breath in our nostrils. We thank you for the food in our bellies. We thank you for clothes on our backs. We thank you for the shelter over our heads. We thank you for our parents, our siblings. We thank you for our schoolwork, our academics. We thank you for our parents' jobs, their businesses. Lord, we give you praise for safety and protection. We return all the glory to you. And Heavenly Father, here we are again to learn together from the word of God. Your word is life. Your word is like a bread of life that we eat and it fills us. Precious Father, we pray that today, as we take this topic, that in the name of Jesus, our hearts will be open, our ears will be open. We will not only hear, but we will receive the word of God with our hearts and that this word would minister something to us we will learn something from today's bible lesson each one of us and we'll be better children of god thank you heavenly father we give you all the praise now and forevermore in jesus name amen all right my friends now before we go into the lesson for today we are going for praise and worship time to sing time to dance, time to rejoice in the presence of God. Remember, it is never too much to give God thanks because every day God is good to you and I. So every day, every moment we have the opportunity, we should give him praise as well. So I hope you're ready with your dancing shoes on and your hands are ready to clap and your bodies are ready to shake and dance to the glory of God. Okay, so let's go join the praise and worship session. And when we come back, we will go straight into the lesson for today. I'll see you right back. Bye now. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're ready to be in the presence of the Lord, shout hallelujah. You 
Hey, my friends, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed praising and dancing and glorifying God. I did. It was really awesome. God bless the praise and worship team. I mean, God, take all the praise, take all the glory that we have offered him today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we're going to go straight into our lesson for today. Now, the title or the topic of our today's Bible lesson is Jesus is baptized with the Holy Spirit. Jesus is baptized with the Holy Spirit. Someone might wonder, oh, Jesus was also baptized with the Holy Spirit? Yes, he was. If you remember what we said last Sunday, that the Holy Spirit is our helper and we need him to be able to do the work of the kingdom. So in this lesson today, we're going to see how that Jesus, while he was on earth, before he started his ministry, before he went about doing what the Father had asked him to do, he was baptized by the Holy Spirit. He needed the power of the Holy Spirit. The same way you and I need the power of the Holy Spirit today and every other day. Okay, so that is the main focus of our lesson today. And we're going to take our text from the book of Matthew chapter 3, verse 13 to 17. Okay, so if you're there, let's open and read together. Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. But John tried to talk him out of it. I am the one who needs to be baptized by you, John said. So why are you coming to me? But Jesus said, it should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. Jesus said, it should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to baptize Jesus. Verse 16. After his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settled on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my dearly beloved Son who brings me great joy. From this passage that we read, like I said, Jesus was about to start his earthly ministry here on earth. This was before he died, okay? And he knew he couldn't do it alone. He needed the power of the Holy Spirit. So when he went to be baptized by John, John hesitated. He didn't want to baptize Jesus because John felt, oh no, this is Jesus, the mighty son of God, and I shouldn't be the one baptizing him. But Jesus said to him, no, it should be done because we must do all that the father requires and the passage records that when jesus was dipped into the water and was coming up out of the water that the heavens opened and the spirit of god descended upon him like a dove and a voice spoke from heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased now remember the holy spirit is not a dove okay but it was a symbol of how you know the holy spirit came down on him like a dove the holy spirit came to rest upon him like a dove but the holy spirit is not a dove okay so don't forget that and then the voice from heaven the voice of god spoke up and said this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased so let's go straight to our key learning points from this lesson. All right. Note that this marks the beginning of the earthly activities of Jesus Christ. Before now, Jesus really had not done anything. He was yet to start and he had to do this. Okay. So our key learning points. One the start of Jesus's ministry and the Trinity. In that singular passage, from this portion of the Bible we read, we can see the manifestation of God the Father, 
God the Son and the Holy Spirit. Jesus already is the Son. Remember the Trinity is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Okay? And Jesus is the Son. Remember the voice that said, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. So Jesus here was identified as the Son of God. And who spoke? God the Father. Can a stranger come and say, this is my son? No. A stranger cannot come and claim you as their son or as their daughter. I'm sure you, nobody would like that. It's only your parents that can claim you as their child. So the same way, it was the voice of God claiming and identifying Jesus as his son. So God spoke from heaven, openly declaring, this is my beloved son. And then, like we read, the Holy Spirit descended on him like a dove. So we can see that Jesus, starting his ministry, he walked with, you know, the Father and the Holy Spirit. And of course, himself. What should we learn from that point? You and I, we cannot do the work of the kingdom alone. We're going to need the Holy Spirit. We're going to need the help of the Father. We're going to need Jesus Christ. Okay? So that's number one learning point. Now the second one is heavens open and the Holy Spirit descends on him. I mean, you've already said that. The Holy Spirit descended on Jesus Christ. At that time, because Jesus was still on earth, the Holy Spirit was not living on earth. Remember, it was when Jesus was about to go, if you flash your mind back to the lesson we took last week, Jesus told them, I will send you the Holy Spirit. He will help you. So at that time, the Holy Spirit had not been sent because Jesus was still here. Okay? So the Holy Spirit would just descended. But now, since after Jesus um, ascended to heaven, we're going to see that in the course of our study, the Holy Spirit came down and has been here for every believer who believes and receives him he comes to abide in them and then through him we can do a lot of things for God through him we can do a lot of things for the kingdom of God so never never assume that you can do it alone if Jesus needed the Holy Spirit you and I we need the Holy Spirit if Jesus needed um, the voice of the father to declare him as son you and i let me ask you a question where do you get your identity from what do you think about yourself who do you think that you are what do you think that you are do you get your self identity only from what people around you say or think about you or do you get your self-worth, your self-identity from what the Word of God says about you? Just as we read here, Jesus got his identity from what the Father said about him. So if you do not know what the Word of God has said about you, if you don't know what the Father in heaven, your heavenly Father has said about you, then maybe you need to start reading your Bible more often so that you can discover the things that your heavenly father has said about you and based on that you build your identity your identity is not only about your name and your surname you're more than that you my friend are a child of god god sees you as his child the bible says we were created in the image and likeness of god you have a piece of god in you so you're not ordinary it doesn't matter what the circumstances around you may be like you are not ordinary god has already spoken his word concerning you he said he made you in his image and likeness so you were not ordinary so never consider yourself as just an ordinary 10 year old or an ordinary 11 year old or an ordinary 12 year old no you're more than ordinary. You carry God on the inside of you. God identifies you just as he identified Jesus Christ as his son. God identifies you as his child. 
and I hope that you can begin to see yourself that way and begin to define yourself by the standards of the scripture and not what the world is saying, not what your classmates think, okay? I've had someone say, um, when I try to preach, um, they, my classmates make fun of me and um, it makes me not want to talk, talk about God anymore. That means you're taking your identity from what your classmates say about you. You're more than what they think or feel about you. You're who God says you are. And that is what you should have at the back of your mind. That is the identity you should carry about. Okay? Never forget that. Now, the lesson point three is the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was empowered by the Holy Spirit. As the Holy Spirit descended on him, he was empowered. Further down in, in um, after, he, after this happened, the Bible says that the Spirit led him to the wilderness. It's not part of our text, but I'm just going to bring that in for context. That the Spirit led him into the wilderness where he was tempted. I'm sure you've heard that story of the temptation of Jesus Christ and how Jesus Christ overcame. Even though the temptation was very intense, he overcame. Why? Because he had already been empowered by the Holy Spirit. So the same way, my friend, you and I, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit to be able to carry out the Great Commission, to be able to go about preaching the good news, to be able to live the life that God has ordained for us to live. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. And how can we get it? By prayer, spend time to pray and tell God, I want to be baptized by the Holy Spirit spend time praying or you can go to um, your Sunday school teachers and tell them I want the baptism of the Holy Spirit and um, you will see that happen in your life and you see the phenomenal the great transformation that will take place in your life okay now lesson um, point four monumental words of confirmation that was God confirming who Jesus Christ was confirming the identity of Jesus Christ, proclaiming to everyone around there, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. My friend, let me tell you something. If you've given your life to Christ and you're living your life through Christ, that is the same way God is proclaiming over you, wherever you are, this is my beloved son. This is my beloved daughter in whom I am well pleased. In fact, God already loves you. God already loves you. He has already said it in John 3, 16, that for God so loved the world. God already loves you. So he has already proclaimed his love over the same way he proclaimed over Jesus. My beloved son in whom I am well pleased. God has already also proclaimed his love over you that you are his beloved daughter, that you are his beloved child, okay? So do not see yourself as ordinary and remember that you need the Holy Spirit, okay? God has pro proclaimed his love over you, but to carry out the task, the commission, to be able to do what God wants you to do here on earth, we cannot do it alone. Just as Jesus needed the Holy Spirit, you and I will need the Holy Spirit. And we can get that by asking, spending time in prayer and asking for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I hope that you've learned something from today's lesson. That God loves you. And in giving you the assignment as a child of God, in asking you to go preach the word of God, you need the Holy Spirit and he has made the Holy Spirit available. All you need to do is ask. The Holy Spirit is willing and ready and able to help you. Okay, so just as Jesus needed this, you and I will also need the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so I hope that this lesson has been a blessing to you just as it has been to me. Okay, so I don't know if there's anyone who's listening to me at this moment 
who is not born again. You can't have the Holy Spirit if you're not born again. You get born again and you invite the Holy Spirit into your life. And that's how it works. If you're not born again, the Holy Spirit is not going to come. Okay? So are you here listening to me and you'd like to give your life to Christ? You can say this short prayer with me. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I have heard your word today and I believe what your word says about me. I thank you for loving me so much that I'm worthy enough for you to send your only begotten son to die for me. Thank you that my sins are forgiven through the death of Jesus Christ by the shedding of his blood. I receive forgiveness today and I give you my heart, Heavenly Father. Come and make your home in my heart. And from here on, use me. Holy Spirit, I welcome you. Come and take control. Use me for the glory of the Father. In Jesus' name, Amen. If you said that prayer, God has received you into his kingdom as a son or his daughter and now you're part of God's family. I hope that's exciting for you because yes, that's a big deal. God bless you for making that decision and I pray for you that you continue to grow in the nurture of God. Okay, so let's take our memory verse again before we call it a wrap for today. Who remembers our memory verse from last Sunday? Don't worry, if you did not, we'll take it again. It's from the book of John, chapter 14, verse 16. John, chapter 14, verse 16. And it says, Then I will ask the Father to send you the Holy Spirit, who will help you and always be with you. John 14, 16. Then I will ask the Father to send you the Holy Spirit, who will help you and always be with you. So know that the Holy Spirit is always with you if you have given your life to Christ. It doesn't matter whether you feel it or not. You don't have to feel it. Sometimes you don't feel the air. That doesn't mean the air is not there. It's there. Whether you feel it or not, there's air in the atmosphere. So that's the same way. The Holy Spirit is ever present, ever with you. It doesn't matter whether you feel it. And you can speak to him. That's the beauty of the Holy Spirit. You can always speak to him. You can always talk to him and listen for him to talk back to you. Yes. Yeah, so with that, we bring our lesson today to a conclusion. I hope this has been a great blessing for you. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. I hope you've learned something. And um, you can take your time in the course of the week to go through um, that passage of scripture again that we read. And um, God bless you. So until next Sunday or until when next we we'll see, take care of yourself, be well, and God bless you. See you. Bye. Teach us.